Hi, everyone. I'm Mike Lester. I uh, manage the machine shop here. And today, we're going to be talking about the brace of water jet cutting machine. And we're going to cut out this sample piece, which you guys are going to need for your assignment. OK, so this is an important part. And we're going to show you exactly how to cut this thing out. All right. So here's what we do. And this is a very, this is about as simple a part as you're ever going to cut on this machine. OK, it's the most basic. All right. It's just one piece of geometry going all the way around. It's two dimensional. All right. We're not talking about a 3D part. It's all two dimensional. <clears throat> Always keep that in mind whenever you're doing these DXF files. OK, so this is all you got to do to get your file onto the controller is we're going to go through the start menu. We're going to go to my computer and we're going to go to your drive that we just put in here, right? This happens to be new drive. And we're going to go down here and look for a file. And in this case, it is flat pattern ME340. Double click that guy and flow path will automatically open up. OK, so when you're first opening a file, don't go to flow path icon and try to open it because the geometry doesn't work out quite the right way when we do it that way. So go through the start menu. So here's the part right here. So I want to place this part inside the grid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of it by clicking this arrow. I've selected all the geometry and I'm going to go ahead and edit. And then I'm going to move all entities. And I'm just going to take it and I'm just going to slide this up, up here so that it's all inside the geometry. OK. And from here, we can apply our tool path and go from there. So now you'll notice I'm in the corner here of this thing. This is later, this is going to be your user-defined home, this corner here. So everything's going to be generated from that position. And so by placing it inside here, there's no um, offsets as to uh, that you have to calculate because you could have your material just go to the corner of your material, come inboard a tiny bit, and know that you'll have a border around it. So that's going to be really important. OK, so we've highlighted this. The next thing we want to do is we want to uh, draw our tool path. So I'm going to go here to draw. And I'm going to go to lead in, lead out properties. Always check this, OK? You want to make sure that the arc is checked. By default, it comes up as line, OK? The line in uh, lead in, lead out doesn't work very well. So I always choose arcs. It creates a nice, smooth transition into your material when it's cutting, when it starts off. I'm going to hit OK. I like it. OK, so it's all highlighted. Now all I need to do is simply go to pre-process, right up here on the top of the screen, auto order path. And there we go. We have, I'm going to blow this up. You can see the arrows going around the part. So the arrows show you what side of the geometry your cut is actually going to happen. If we change the compensation, it could cut the inside. So let's say you have a sheet and you want this piece removed, you don't want the piece, you want the opening. So then we could change this and have it cut the interior side. So if I don't like what I see, I can go back here. I can undo it. I can re-highlight. I can go back to pre-process. I can go to auto path settings. I could change the offset from right, which is what it is, to left. Let's see what happens. And then we're going to go here, auto order path. And now you'll see the lead in, lead out still down here on the outside, but the cut is on the inside of your part. All right? So, but I don't want that. I want to cut, I want the part. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to go back here, select all, <clears throat> pre process, auto path settings, and I'm going to change it back to right, which is where it was. OK, and then I'm just going to go here, out of order path, and there we go. And we're back to where we were, and that's what I want. And so all there is left to do with this in AutoPath is export the file. So I go to File, Export Path As, 
and just l save it right here. Final flat pattern in the USB. If you need to, you can save it on the desktop, whatever. Um, and I'm just gonna hit yes. Okay, it's there. I'm gonna go back to flow cut. All right, this is what we did earlier. Uh, let's say I pull up the new one. Revert that back. I'm gonna open up the file. So I'm gonna go back to the USB. Final flat pattern. It's an ORD file. That's what I'm looking for at this point. Click that baby. File is changed. You want to save changes? Nah. So here's the part sitting in the grid. We haven't located the, the, this point yet, but we're going to tell the machine where that's at in just a second. Okay. So we got to do a few things here. So first off, the thickness of the material that we're cutting is 0.062. All right. So I'm going to change that. 062. 16th of an inch. And it's not aluminum. It is actually um, mild steel. So big difference between the two. So mild steel. We're going to change the orifice size or the nozzle tube size to 20 thou. And I'm going to change the pierce time to two. These are seconds, okay? So the pierce time, also, when it pierces, all it's doing is it's stationary where, it's, where we want to start the cut. So the water comes on, the sand flows through, and when the sand flows through, it is cutting, okay? And it only takes just a split second for that to penetrate a 16th inch of steel. So I give it two seconds, it's plenty. So if I've got lots of holes, lots of places where I've got to stop and start, I want, to mac I, want to, I want to minimize that number as much as possible and still make it through. Otherwise, it's spending way too much time piercing, and we don't want that, okay? So we're going to keep that number down, but I'm only piercing once, uh, so I'm only worried about two seconds, so I'm really not worried about anything, but I'm just showing you this. So when I click this and hit OK, I can see right here it didn't stay. So it wants, to, it wants to be told twice. It's like a lot of us. We can't, one, one, one time of being told something's not always enough. <laughs> so. All right. All right, so it's there. So all my settings are good, okay? I still haven't set my location yet. So here's what we're gonna do. Um, Okay, so we're here. I'm going to use. I'm going to run the nozzle over, and I'm going to tell the machine where I want to pick up this location at. And um, so I'm going to raise the nozzle up so I can get this blast shield off of here. And I'm going to use the arrow keys to locate that position. I'm just going to come over. And I'm going to go. I'm going to go page down for the Z, up and down, page down. Very important. Make sure that you're paying a lot of attention when you're moving the Z up and down, um, because you could very easily crash that nozzle right into your part. It'll just shatter the thing. Okay. And um, when that stuff shatters, the solid tungsten carbide, whenever it shatters, it just fragments like a like a grenade. Okay, it just goes everywhere. So you don't want that stuff stuck in your eyes, your face, or anywhere else. All right, so you just have to be really careful on that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this guy right here. It's 0.1 of an inch in thickness. That's the gap that I want between the nozzle and my material, okay? So we're gonna find the location X and Y first. So I'm gonna run the nozzle over. Find, I'm trying to hit that X there. And then I'm gonna run the nozzle down in Z. Okay, so I'm just gonna run it on down, but I'm gonna make sure that I don't bump into the, oops, hit the wrong one. Sorry about that, move it back over. I'm gonna, I'm just tapping the Z. And now I'm going to use this as a feeler gauge, but when I'm tapping down, I don't wanna hit the um, spacer. So I tap it down, check it, tap it down, check it, 
tap it down, check it. And now I can feel it, right? So I'm gonna go up one tap. And now I've got it. And that's exactly where I want the Z height to be. Then you can set the user defined home right where it's at right now. And we already showed you guys how to do that. So essentially, I've got this whole grid here to work with, but this grid doesn't really mean a whole lot except for, for comparison for sizes. The actual cutting envelope is actually this little red dotted box. That's the cutting envelope. And it's, and it's showing us where within that red envelope, the cutting envelope, where I'm at currently. And if you look at the whole picture here, that red envelope's not as big as the entire opening. It's a little bit smaller. It's actually four foot by four foot. So, which measures from here to about here, and from about here to almost to the back. All right, so I can place my cutting part anywhere inside this, inside this envelope that I want to. And I can put my nozzle there, call that my user defined home. So essentially, I can actually have that part anywhere I want in here. So if, my, if I've got a big piece of metal, but I want to cut this corner, I want that part out of that particular area of my material, then I can run it up there and do it just that way. So you'll see how that's going to work. All right, so I've got that located. I'm going to raise the nozzle up, the machine up, so I can put this little blast shield back on. And this keeps... This, uh, this little rubber thing is what keeps all the sand that sprays here on occasions from wearing down all the other material that's on there. So I'm gonna raise this guy up. I'm gonna slide this thing on so it goes all the way up until it stops, make sure it's up there. And then I'm gonna tell it to go home. So I'm gonna hit the little home thing I get the screen and I just need to go to this. It's all, always defaults to go to user defined home. So be careful that you don't just accidentally hit this when you're trying to set your current position because it'll go somewhere else. But right now I want it to go home. So I'll, we're in control here. And it'll just slowly move. All right, so I'm gonna set this down. And so essentially, I'm ready to cut this part. So I'm gonna make sure that the water and the pump, uh, well, first off, the water and the sand needs to be on. It's a good idea for you to check this. I always have it on. Um, I normally turn the chiller on also, but it's pretty loud, so I'm not gonna bother with it right now. So you can hear me keep talking. But when I hit the switch here, the pump's gonna come on and it's gonna be super loud, okay? So usually we wear headphones with it also. So I'm not gonna worry about it for now. All right, so um, here we go. You ready? So I'm gonna turn the pump on right here. I'm gonna wait for it to come up to pressure. Okay, so it's at 50,000 PSI right now, okay? There's just no water coming out yet. When I hit the switch, it's gonna move over to that location here. It's gonna move over here and start to, uh, the water will come out and then the sand will come on, all right? Here's the play button right here. I hit the play button, it runs the program, simple as that. You can see it moving right there. You can also see it moving right here. Okay, so it tells me here, program is finished. I'm gonna say okay. 
and now I can move the head out of the way. So I'm going to go page up. Be careful, don't accidentally hit page down, all right, because you're going to jam that nozzle right into your material. Page up, you can move it to the side, get it out of the way. All right, that's usually good enough. And we can just grab the part. And there she blows. Just like in the picture, okay? Now, I just want to say a couple things. One, uh, on word precautions for safety and that kind of stuff. And that is, uh, don't approach the machine without, safe, without some kind of eye protection, okay? This thing is notorious for spitting out the sides and coming up and attacking from different angles. And when you do get sprayed in the face with this thing, you really feel it. So if you don't have something covering your eyes, you could really get in big trouble, okay? Um, and also remember, you're working with sheet metal. Um, it's for the most part, it's not too bad, but there are some burrs on these things. They will cut you. And if you're handling big sheets, wear gloves because uh, heavy stuff, you can cut yourself really easily with, okay? So always have uh, somebody around to help you out. Never be working in here alone, all right? Always with somebody. And you should, I should always be here, or a student assistant should always be here at least. And um, so you always want to make sure that you can get help in case anything goes wrong, all right? So thanks for your attention, and just ask questions uh, if you have any uh, as things come up. Appreciate it. Bye.